everybody, so we've come to town because I'm looking for something. And this is what we're after, it's a humming top. Now you're only gonna find something like this in a really good traditional toy store like Kids Corner here in Herne Bay where I live. That is what we want. Okay, now we've got our top, we have to get it back to the studio, disassemble it and have a look at the mechanism. I'm pretty sure most people know how this works, but you do that, it spins like crazy. Now if we take this apart, we can have a look at it. When we get it apart, it's only two bits of steel. And in there is a slotted washer. This twisted bar pushes through the slotted washer because you're holding the bar, of course, all it can do is spin and spin it does. Now this is the same mechanism that you'll find in twist and pump drills. And this is a really simple mechanism for the heart of this. But there's one other thing that this has that's not immediately obvious. And that is, it's a top. So it is also a flywheel. So if we add a flywheel to this twisted bar mechanism, we can make a very simple generator. Of course, I turned to Tinkercad and drew this up, but I didn't draw it up straight from scratch. I actually got some extra bits from other places and made modifications to them because sometimes that's just the easiest thing to do. Now, OT Vinter, and I've used them a couple of times, are doing this spinning top, and at the heart of it, is a mechanism that we want which is right here it's a ratchet mechanism so i extracted that mechanism got rid of the ball top and created a cage for it to sit in that cage i did some of the bits on it but other bits were available for instance these pillars were on tinkercad and sorry thingiverse and i grabbed them from thingiverse and sized them to what i wanted and of course i did the same with these great feet that i just love again they're on thingiverse and i just grabbed them and used them so some bits I've grabbed and used some bits I've adapted from what's already been done and some bits I've drawn up myself now that's a good way of getting a model off the ground really really quickly so it puts together really easily and that's how it puts together now in there is a thrust bearing at 47 by 25 and it sits there because that is the main bit that's going to rotate and you can see it's got holes in it to take the magnets and that sits nicely on that thrust bearing so when we spin it it spins nice and freely. Now the drive mechanism is this clutch plate here and the only thing to remember is to get these the right way around. When you look at this clutch plate you'll see a little sort of red projection and the green projection goes onto the red because that's the way the clutch works. And then drop another identical thrust bearing into the recess in the center and then we can put the clutch plate in. And there we go. Like that. Now, in order to get that flywheel effect, what I've got here is a two and a half kilo barbell. And that sits on top there and fits directly on there. And that forms the flywheel portion. Then we can shove the handle in and give it a go. Okay, so I've put a serpentine coil around it. And to make these, I've put a link at the end of this video to the serpentine coil making video. And then in the carrier, what we've got are some 20 mil magnets. They're 20 mil by 4.5 mil, and they are arranged north, south, north, south, north, south. That drops in there. Then we've got a cap that goes on here. That then goes on top there. And our pump handle goes in. Then we have to put that stop on the bottom because when you pull that up you don't want to be pulling it out all of the time so they put the stop on the bottom and either glue it or screw it in. Okay so clearly a child would know how to use this so I'm going to pump it up and down and we're going to get a volt reading and for that we've got Luke. <laughs> <laughs> so easily enough to charge your mobile phone with. This serpentine coil and magnet arrangement is not something everybody loves. I love it, but it's not something everybody loves and I can understand that. This motor, of course, is absolutely everywhere. But what we're doing applies to any of this kind of motor, irrespective of the size. Because if we take that apart and pull it to pieces, what we'll get is this. This is a really popular motor. This motor is um, quite depressing actually. If we were to take this out of the gearbox, which is right here, and spin it by hand, we'd probably get about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a volt out of it because we need to gear it to get 
speed out of this before we start getting the voltage. And of course, once you gear it, you do get speed, but you need very much more torque in order to turn it. And we don't have a lot of available torque. So it would be really cool if we could change this motor, which is a brushed DC motor, into a brushless motor that had low RPM, low torque, but high voltage output. Now in order to do that, what we need to do really is have a look on the inside. Okay, now we've got it apart. There's the body and it has a bearing right there. And of course, down there you can see the magnets and they're um, oh, ferrite magnets, I think. Put that to one side. Here's the rotor. This is the cap. And on the cap, you can see the brushes there because it was a brushed DC motor. Now, if you look on the rotor, there's the commutator right there. And have a look at those coils. If we look at those coils, that wire is pretty thick. And that wire is pretty thick because it's got to take a lot of amps, but there isn't much of it. So what we're going to do is rewind this rotor. So as we follow that wire, we can see it begins there and we unwind it and it unwinds in an anti-clockwise rotation, which means it was wound clockwise. So let's unwind all of those. When you've unwound it, what happens is it goes into that section of the commutator. There's a clip actually on this and then it comes out and then this one again is anti-clockwise. So again, that has been turned clockwise. So there's a start point, turn it clockwise into the clip out turn it clockwise into the clip out, turn it clockwise and finish it. Now there's 24 turns of 0.6 mil gauge wire. And there we go. Now I've got 150 turns of thinner wire on. Now I have a choice here. If I'd taken the coil just straight over that bit there and soldered on, I would have made it into a brushed DC generator, but I want to do something different with it. So over the commutator, I've fitted this large bearing. It's 21 mil by 15 mil. And that means that Instead of turning this bit as we used to, if we fit the body over it, we'll be able to turn the body and this stays still. So this becomes the stator and this becomes the rotor. In order to center that, I've 3D printed a centering ring. You could of course just cut this from a bit of plastic, but that goes into the body and over. There we go, over the bearing like that. Okay, and that's it finished. Now, instead of it turning on the axle, if we grip the axle, it turns on the body. So now the body is the generator and it's a brushless DC generator. But let's have a look at the voltage output. Okay, so if we grip the axle this time and spin this body, we'll get a voltage reading here. And what we're expecting is something like six times the volts that we got before, because we got about 0.2, 0.3 volts without this adaptation done. We put in about six times the length of wire, so we should get more or less six times the voltage. But <laughs> let's spin, and if Luke will do the honours and let me know what voltage we're getting, then we'll know. Oh, 1.3? <laughs> there you go. 1.4. <laughs> That's a piece of cake. <laughs> I think you get 1.8. Did you? Oh, well, that's pretty cool. And then I printed up a big cog to go on the body of the motor because we turned the body into the rotor and put it in this cradle. So now what we've got is a way that we can turn that. So I was thinking of combining these two. Now to combine these two, of course, what we need is a gear to interface that. And there's a massive gear that will go on that. So if we turn that gear, we'll turn this generator and we should get some generation. So to do all of that, we're going to adapt this. We're going to adapt this to include this. Incidentally, all of these files I'll put together as a project so that it will be um, one set of files to produce this kind of generator. So this one is already on Thingiverse, but I'll put together as a separate project so that you don't have to go through this route if you don't want to. Anyway, in order to convert this to run this, the first thing we need is a gear, and the next thing we need to do is get rid of the magnets and the coil arrangement. So this, it's just a reprint of this, but without the little projections to wind a coil. And this is just a reprint of this, but without the magnets. So let's replace those two things.
Now of course we need to put this gear on. You'll notice there's a little ring here. That ring matches in there so that we can centre it and all we do is glue it on. Then when we've done that, we can put the ratchet in and there we go, we use our handle pump on there, it'll spin that gear and of course it's still a flywheel so we can still put the flywheel on it and that goes on top of the gear like that. There we go. Now we can interface this right there. So we spin that, there we go, our generator spins. Okay, so that's it put together. Now this big cog here has 100 teeth and this one on the body of the motor has 30 teeth. So it's round about a 3 to 1 gear ratio, which is not a massive amount, but let's give it a pump and we'll see what we get. So we got three to four volts out of it, which is pretty good when you think about it. It was so easy to push. I might actually put another gear set in between this and this because it was really easy to work. But if you remember this one, we got about six or seven volts with this arrangement with the magnets there and the serpentine coil. It's no real surprise, of course, because this one, remember, is using ferrite magnets, which are not particularly strong. That one's using neodymium magnets, so the magnetic field is very much stronger. But this has the benefit of being everywhere. I mean, it's an easy adaptation that we did to this that would work on absolutely any motor, and so you don't need to wind serpentine coils or buy neodymium magnets and make the whole thing up. You can just do an adaptation there. Anyway, I thought that was fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.